Welcome back to the room three. All right, let's work on getting some of the other, hopefully better endings. There's two remaining endings that I haven't gotten. I found out where to progress with this dang desk. I wish I could say I did it myself, but I looked around for about five more minutes, found nothing, and ended up looking it up online. The solution is has been just right in front of me. This thing that just got unlocked when we pressed the switch from this drawer on the left side, it rotates. July 23rd. The house is turning in on itself, warped by the knoll. I find myself forever traveling in circles, down corridors that turn back on themselves. I use the doorway machines to bypass the maze, but the crystals run low on energy. I must find a new power source soon, or be forever trapped. Bypassing the maze with the doorway machines. That's whatever we've been going through, like when we break open a new doorway. That would be the doorway machines. Or I guess maybe it'd be the laser thing that shoots towards it. Maybe that's the machine. <laughs> that's cool. Token! That's for the fortune teller machine, I think. Imprisoned, thanks. He deceives you. No kidding. I th think I know where that goes to. I think that goes on the doorway at the very, very, very beginning of the game. Back in the cell. Yeah, I recognize that star pattern. Yeah, whole new puzzle area. Got to look on every little nook and cranny for each one of these drawers for a secret button. July 27th. That interfering friend of AS continues to ask questions, and I should like to ask a few of my own. How did they overcome the Null? How much energy resides in that brilliant soul of theirs? It would take the last dregs of the energy I have stored to bring them here, but they might also be the key. I have no choice but to take the risk.
pretty sure there's something more going on here than just one of them contains a note and then that's it. We have this weird keyhole, plus I feel like this is a obscure way of entering a password with these open or closed shelves. Very satisfying noise. What? <laughs> oh, that one's extra long. Okay, well, they all have numbers on the top, 17, 31, and 30, so I think I'm supposed to flip all of these in a way that's going to equal up to 17. So, 14, that's not going to do it. 9, oh, this will do it. That did do it, right? 12 plus 5? Yeah. Uh, maybe I have to put it back in? Yes. Okay. Thirty-one. So we kind of need big numbers here, don't we? Eight plus eight is six. Oh, wait, wait, wait. These aren't all pluses. These are times. Um. Hmm. That brings up a question. Order of operations. The multiplication would happen first, before adding together. The arrows are pointing this way, so I assume that this is the first term, this is the next one, this is the next one. 4 times 7 is 28, then plus 3 is 31. Yes. And this one has addition and subtraction and multiplication. I won't go through the math, but I think this is correct. Only one way to find out. Yes. Maybe this doesn't mean it's necessarily correct. What if it did this dramatic look over to the panel and then nothing happened? <laughs> Just a wah wah noise. Oh, I hear like a phone ringing. This does kind of look like a switch panel to switch phone lines or however old phones used to work. And the library lit up, obviously. Was there a phone in the library, though? The only phone I can think of was in the greenhouse. Oh, that's ringing, but it's not really a phone. Cross-shaped key. We just had something that we could use that on in that new room we just found. Next to the, like, six drawers, I think it was. I think it was two by four. Can I also put this cylinder in here? Yes. Record it. Hmm. 
Hm. I need to get that up and going again so that this has power? There's numbers on this. Looks like a year, 1795. That could be related to like another way that I need to configure the machine where we turned on the power. I don't know. But let's go use this key. token for the fortune teller? Hmm. So what about this? Like, can I still move these? I can't. Yeah, I can't move these either, so I can't input the 1795 number in any way into this machine right now. Where does this go? Oh, hey. At some point, this little latch came off. Not while I was in here, but just while we were doing the other stuff. So now I can dial a number. This is probably where I dial 1795. Still don't know where the handle goes, but maybe we'll know after I do this. Actually, wait a minute. Is that it? Oh. Oh, I think I just accidentally clicked on this. Yep. Cool. Succeeded. something ringing in another room. Ah, this thing has power again, so we can record on the wax cylinder. August 3rd. A breakthrough. The portal remains stable, but only to look through. Touching the thing causes the image to fade. I need more power if I am to pass physically to the other side. The landscape is beyond extraordinary. Hmm. 
I think this might go next to the bell. Yes. This probably goes into the thing in the greenhouse. This thing. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, so I needed to flip it around because this side is transformed, but I need to flip it around so I can then access the other side and do the same thing. This is the other artifact that I can put in that one of those final pedestals to bring me to a new door. Just need to solve it first. Or do I? Oh no! You can just take it. Thanks, Maggie Cox. There's the bad ending. This is the tower we've already done before, but I'm going to place it there anyway. Probably not going to solve it. I guess I'll open it, just for the fun of it. This one's different. Oh, I gotta follow the laser as it moves. That's quite nice. Very easy compared to the last one. could be some sort of synergy effect. Maybe I do want to solve this one just in case. Wait, that actually feels like it did sort of have a synergy effect. Hold on. It's like the same door, but... Yeah, the same door, but less null and less creepy atmosphere with this one. Hmm. Just to make sure if I do the main one again. Oh, actually, there's no button for the main one. But I think I can just press this again. Yeah, just back to that.
I must have poured over a thousand maps. Greyholm isn't just gone, it never existed. I sometimes doubt my sanity and others are starting to agree with me. This quest can only land me in an asylum. No matter. I find curiosity has lessened its grip on me and life's other interests are returning. Whatever it was that drew me is gone. I can sense it no longer and I finally feel free. Was there ever a source of the null? Or was it always just bait in the trap? I know now that I will never know, and that knowledge is a sweet, sweet joy. So we started with imprisoned, and then release, and then escape. Escape looks very much like release, except I guess instead of the null coming out into our world and everything being horrible, it just doesn't. Now, there's also a secret ending over here. For the fourth and final ending, I didn't want to spend 10 hours probably fruitlessly searching around trying to find it, so I just looked it up online, at least the first steps of it. So the first bad door has been opened. Now I'm going to put this on like before, however... It said that instead of opening this side, go to the other and yes, I could barely even tell that was a screw. We do that. We open this special little plate. Now after this, we have to solve it, and then I think we also have to solve the other one and get them both up and going, and then we should get a different doorway than we've had before. Now with both of them solved, I should be able to get a different door. In fact, it might already be the different door? I think I need to press the buttons. I haven't pressed them yet. Oh yes, that is a different door. This ending, by the way, is called Lost. Yeah. All right. Yeah, not a good ending either. Congratulations, you've discovered all the secrets within the walls of Greyholm and have finally seen all the endings to the Room 3. Your dedication in this matter has been most impressive. Thank you. Although I had to look up some hints for two of them. Let's finish with some thoughts on the Room 3. I loved it. It's everything I liked in the first and the second game, except more of it and with a couple tweaks, like the fact that you can go into stuff in miniature is really cool, just adds an extra little bit of intrigue to the things you interact with, extra layers. One big thing that's different is that instead of like it is in the other games where once you're done with a room you go to another one and you never see that old one again, it's just, it's just over. There's no sense of permanence to any of the places that you are, you really only get to know them briefly and they're gone. But in this one, you have the whole hub system. There's still a bunch of rooms that you never do get to go back to, but there's also a lot of ones that you do. And it's nice to have that sense of permanence, of something that's kind of constant that you can always come back to. And you can get to know the places deeper than you could otherwise. There is another The Room game called Old Sins. I really want to play it, but unfortunately it hasn't come out on PC yet. 
How they've been doing the Room 1 through 3 so far is it comes out on mobile platforms like iOS first, and then maybe about a year later, it gets remastered and released on PC. It's been a little bit more than a year at this point since the release of Old Sins, so I'm hoping it's going to come out soon. But for now, that has been The Room 3. Thank you for watching.